there's not a lot going on like after the initial buzz of a few cars driving around. What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a beautiful Saturday afternoon in July in Watford. Behind me is the Watford Underground train station where I have spent a lot of money buying train tickets to head into London when I was younger. This video is a 500,000 subscriber special video and also a celebration on the milestone as well as thanking each and every single one of you guys on what you have been able to help me with support to achieve. So when Supercars of London started to pick up the pace and grow incredibly quickly I was started to think about what could I do for a 500,000 subscriber special. There were so many ideas and suggestions through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and in the YouTube comments from all of you guys as to what to do and I thought the best way to celebrate and take a look back at some of the years that I've been doing Supercars of London was to take you guys on a journey that starts here. At the the Watford train station where 10 years ago back in 2006 my dad took me into London for an art GCSE project we went to the v &A Museum which is in South Kensington and it was the first time that I caught a glimpse of what the supercar lifestyle is like in central London and through the affluent areas of Knightsbridge and South Kensington after briefly experiencing and checking out some of the Ferraris at the Ferrari dealership and also seeing some Aston Martins Bentleys and Rolls Royces driving on the road I was like I need to go back into London to see what goes on every weekend in these parts of London. So that is where Supercars of London was born two years before I even set my channel up. What we're gonna do now is jump in my car, go for a bit of a drive, go through the journey of Supercars of London, take a look at some of my favorite videos and basically do a video of how I got to 500,000 subscribers. Right, let's start the video in Watford because that is where I live turn these parking sensors off. So every single journey when I traveled into London started pretty much here or at the train station. And the first time that I went to London, I was around 15 years old, which yep, is about 10 years ago. I am 25 and a half now. And it's crazy to think of the journey that I've been on. And in the last 24 months or so, I really haven't had the opportunity to just take a step back or just stop everything and just look at what has happened to supercars of London, but also the supercars in London and that whole car spotting scene and community has completely exploded. So I used to take the train into London and I used to buy child tickets. Child tickets were approximately £2.40 at the time, which was a bargain, seeing as an adult fare, once you go went over 15 years old, was about £9, and I never had that sort of money to get into London. So even up until I was about 17 or 18, just don't tell anyone, um, I still paid for child tickets before I got an Oyster card. But every single week, I would head into London. Didn't really matter too much about the weather. I was always keen on going in and filming the cars, more so for my personal gain on seeing these incredible cars than it was to upload or to share it. coming into school, 15, 16 years old, started telling people about the cars that I had seen, showing pictures of them, that the interest started. So I thought, why not set a YouTube channel up so that I can just share the link rather than showing people 
And that is when Sexy Man Bud Bud was created. That was my first ever YouTube channel, Sexy Man Bud Bud. I know that I have covered some of these uh, elements and information in previous videos a couple of years ago, uh, but for those that don't know, my first channel was called Sexy Man Bud Bud, and that was started on the 31st of May 2007, and to this date has 170 subscribers. No videos, I deleted all of the videos and I moved them across to Supercars of London when that was set up on the 31st of October 2008 as I finished school as I finished sixth form I went on my gap year and that is when Supercars of London was created myself and Zach who has recently appeared in a few videos but over the time has always been in in videos myself and him came together because he was my next-door neighbor back in the day when we were 15 16 we created Supercars of London together We both did paper rounds and we both earn between 20 and 25 pounds per week and back then that was a lot of money for not too much work we had to wake up at about half past five in the morning and we were doing a paper round before school and on the weekend Saturday and Sunday seven days a week there was no stopping us and that is how I was able to afford my first mobile phone that had video camera capabilities my family uh, obviously I've got a mum and a dad and I've got an older brother and a younger sister we all grew up in Watford my dad had a, re a regular job and my mum worked in a school and sort of bounced around jobs that made sure that she was um, sort of free during the summer holidays so that she could be I suppose well the best mum in terms of taking us to tennis tournaments football tournaments whatever it is her time during the holidays was dedicated to us which was incredible so thanks mum we never came from money my mum still drives her 2004 Ford Focus and my dad has got like a 1999 Toyota RAV4 in black um, and so all of the money that I earn back then on paper rounds or working part-time in Next, working part-time in Argos, that was all spent in traveling into London and buying new mobile phones that had better camera quality so that I could make videos that were even better. And some of the videos that I'm playing now, you could probably think that they are filmed on a potato or a toaster, but in fact, they are filmed on the very early stages of video cameras on mobile phones. Supercars of London was created quite late on in 2008 and back then there was no strategy there was no end goal it was purely a place to share the videos that I'd filmed and to put into perspective how there was absolutely zero strategy first of all our videos were ranged between 10 seconds and 25 seconds long it was a singular clip of a Lamborghini Gallardo Ferrari driving down the road and making hopefully quite a lot of noise on the first day that we set up Supercars of London, the 31st of October, we uploaded 26 videos in two hours. <laughs> that was our aim to populate the YouTube channel and prove to the internet that we did exist before Supercars of London. So we were like, we need to set a new YouTube channel up, but we need to make sure that we're still known for the car spotting stuff and we still know that we existed before Supercars of London. So yes, we uploaded 26 videos in about two hours. One of the major factors in 2009, 2010, when I realized that Supercars of London was quite popular, was Haman themselves actually stole my video clip of the Haman LP640 driving and attached it to their product of, buy, of selling the exhaust. So back then I was like, they're using our video to sell their exhaust. <laughs> Surely I should be paid or I should be at least credited for this tool of marketing. And so I contacted Haman. They didn't reply, but that video got deleted off their website. And that was when I sort of realized that what we were doing was bigger than just me watching back videos that I'd shot the year before. So when I started to see hundreds and sometimes thousands of views come in on Supercars of London during the early stages, I was like, this is pretty crazy that a hobby of mine, that something that I enjoy doing, is also enjoyed by so many 
other people out there. So during my gap year in 2009, I worked for a hotel, which was a really, really cool experience. I got to meet some pretty awesome people, including David Beckham, which is a, a massive claim to fame of mine. And I also worked for H.R. Owen, Ferrari and Maserati in St. Albans, Chiswell Green. And that is where I thought, or I saw an opportunity of merging business and work with my YouTube hobby. So combining the two, filming every time I went out for a ride in a supercar from Ferrari Maserati and uploaded it to my YouTube. And that was when I thought, this is what I want to do for a career. To do with cars, but something that I enjoy so much that I'm passionate about that I want to spend time doing it. In 2010, I went to uni and it was a pretty boring three years if you're looking at it from a YouTube perspective. There wasn't too much that went on. Every opportunity I got during the summer holidays, during the Christmas break, I went back into London and filmed at the cars. And this is also when myself and Zach started to go our separate ways. We both went to different universities. We were both quite far away from London, but it just wasn't feasible, it didn't work, and it wasn't efficient to both be running the YouTube channel. So because I was going into London during my summer holidays and things like that, I felt that it was the right thing to do for me to take it on and basically put as much time as I could into the YouTube channel. And I actually left university April 2013 with 25,000 subscribers. So three years ago in April, I left uni with 25,000 subscribers. So coming out of university, I knew that I needed Supercars of London to, to be something more than just a summer activity. I needed to earn money during the winter and I didn't know how to do it. Obviously I had my social media consultancy that was paying the rent, it was paying my bills and it was covering all of my costs, petrol and everything. But I needed, I needed something more and that was when I decided that I needed to create TV style episodes to make sure that I could run through the winter when there wasn't that many cars around. My first supercar started and it was the first time that I put myself on camera. I put my face on camera. And I suppose the things that I was nervous about was what are my people, what, what are my friends at university gonna think? What are my friends at school gonna think if they stumble across like me, my channel, what am I getting up to now? So I was incredibly nervous about what people around me and my close friends and family are gonna think of me putting myself on camera and presenting a YouTube channel on my own platform and I just felt incredibly nervous and scared about doing it. But then I thought, well if my channel has got 40,000 of you guys supporting it and enjoying the videos, what am I scared of? I'm just gonna do it. So the journey of my first supercar, it was well underway and I was still pretty nervous that I'd announced to 40, 45,000 of you guys that at the end of this series, I was gonna buy a car. And I still had no idea how I was gonna do it. I still drove my Vauxhall Astra, which I owned outright. And I started to come up with this business plan inspired by a few American entrepreneurs out there, one of them being the guy that set up the website, the Million Pixel website where you bought a pixel and used it as advertising space. And there was a million pixels and he sold each space for a dollar and it went viral and he became a millionaire. And I was inspired by that so much that I thought if I can get sponsors that want to advertise on the car and want to advertise on the YouTube channel, that's how I'm gonna be able to drive my dream car. It meant that I was offering people the advertising space, but at the same time, I was being able to drive this car, I was being able to own this car, and I could film it and document my real life journey of owning a supercar, which I didn't feel had been done properly on YouTube before. My car is smoking, I'm gonna to have to go. My car's smoking. I really don't know what to do in the middle of Paris. I never called it work, I never treated it as work, and I still 
cannot treat what I do as calling it work because for me, I wake up every morning and I do what I love. It is by far the best thing about all of the hard work that has gone into Supercars of London. And to put the amount of work into perspective, I've done some sort of childish calculations on how many miles, that's quite nice, how many miles I have walked, how many hours I've put in to just going into London to film. I'm not including emails, I'm not including editing, which usually took place at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm not talking about the commute into London, which was an hour every single time, but on average, it was two times a week. And if we look at that from the moment that I started Supercars of London, which was actually two to three years after I first started going into London. So let's take it from 2008 when I started Supercars of London, all the way up, to 2014 where I hit 100,000 subscribers. It took me six years and 25 days, which is just over 2,200 days. If I was on average going into London twice a week, that's 104 days per year going into London, and on average spending around seven hours in London and walking about eight miles. Those calculations add up, and I'm not making this up, it is written down, it's around 4,300 hours of walking around London and filming supercars in London, and it's around 5,000 miles. If you then split those miles back up, time divided by six into the amount of years that I've been doing this, it works out to be about 33 marathons per year that I've walked or ran after supercars to get from zero subscribers to 100,000 subscribers. Totally, totally nuts, if you ask me. Supercars of London and your guys' support has been absolutely incredible, and I have not really had the time to sit back, take a look at some of these statistics, and really take them in. I just have been completely non-stop, daily vlogging from May back in last year, collaborating with Sakoni Jolies in which I really saw and was motivated by Jonathan and Anna that all of their work and all of their time was paying off and their daily vlogs I mean still are enjoyable entertaining and no one really sees the work that goes on behind the camera because it's not just a 15 minute episode. My videos aren't just a 10 minute video. The amount of thought and the amount of time that goes into actually creating the videos to then going to film and the content collecting takes the time and then it still takes two to three hours to edit each video and then my internet sometimes just takes around 45 minutes to an hour to upload the video and in that time you are working out the right title you are doing all of your descriptions you're creating your thumbnails there is a huge process that goes into each 10 minute 15 minute 20 minute video that is put onto YouTube whether that's from my channel or whoever's YouTube channel that you watch there isn't just a 10 minute video and that's it, the work behind the scenes. 95% of that video is very, very difficult to see because it's never really out there to be seen. So the work that goes on behind closed doors on everyone's YouTube channel out there is totally incredible and every YouTuber I respect for how much time, effort and hard work goes into the success and the growth of subscribers, views, it is mind-blowing. So from my R8, I had so many incredible memories with the Audi R8. I did Gumball 3000, I did my first supercar road trip, I'd been watching Top Gear since I was about 11, 12, and dreamt of driving a fast car up mountains, across Europe, and was my experience of going on that supercar road trip with Shmi 150, seen through glass, Seb Delaney, J Mr. JWW was on there as well in a black Audi R8 V10 Plus before he had a YouTube channel. The Lamborghini dream was still in the back of my head. I bet myself and I bet my brother and I bet a lot of people at school that I was gonna buy a Lamborghini by the time I turned 25. And back then I had no idea how I was gonna do it. It was an incredible day picking up my first Lamborghini is definitely not going to be my last Lamborghini and sadly I only owned it for six months for reasons I have stated in previous videos and then I ended up with this the AMG GTS this car does everything it is the perfect car for me at the moment I'm thoroughly enjoying it 
the power is incredible, the sound is phenomenal, and this car, it is one of the best cars that I have ever driven. To think that my life now, I'm not only living my dream, I am working exactly how I could have dreamt that I would potentially work. I am by far putting in the most hours right now that I have done ever before. I'm probably working between 8 a.m. until 1, 2 a.m. in the morning every single day, whether that be filming, whether that be doing emails, whether that be coming up with new ideas, whether that be working on Supercars of London clothing or future projects, which I can't really talk about at the moment. I suppose all of the work and this video proves that it is possible if you have a dream, you can do it. I mean, I never had more than £100 in my bank account up until I was about 18, 19 years old. I was brought up to respect money, to respect work, have a good work ethic. At one point, my mum was working three or four jobs. Um, so I always had the inspiration to work and, and basically live my dream. And I cannot believe that it is happening and you guys have made it all possible. It has been a totally, totally incredible journey so far to 500,000 subscribers. I love one of the best things about running Supercars of London is how many incredible people I meet, whether that be walking down the street in central London, in the shopping center, at a car meet, at a car dealership. I've met so many of you guys that show your appreciation and love for Supercars of London that I just have so much fun just having car conversations, talking about my car, talking about your car, whatever it is. It's just been an incredible experience to create a community. The Supercars of London community, 500,000 subscribers strong, still growing. Bring on 1 million subscribers because these figures are totally, totally mind blowing. But I'm so motivated to be the best I could possibly be at making videos, at being on camera, at editing videos, at talking to you guys on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever it is, Snapchat, wherever it is, I'm always there on my phone and I am always doing my best to talk to you guys so that we can basically have the most fun with cars as possible. Supercars of London, the name started as Supercars in London, but obviously you have seen through the journey of this YouTube channel that we have, we've grown bigger than Supercars, we've grown bigger than London. I will always continue sharing my adventure. I will always continue to document my life around supercars, a real perspective of life around supercars. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, I will always be filming real videos that have, that are fun, easy to watch, and for the supercar lover. And it's as simple as that. It's just, it's just so cool. It's so cool. I really didn't know what I wanted to do for 500,000 subscribers. There were so many video ideas of doing burnouts, doing donuts, mucking around with my car, having drag races. And it is cool. It is cool. And I will get on to doing those sorts of things with my car and with other people's cars. But for such a special video and for such a, like a special moment for me and you guys, I just wanted to bring you in on a journey as we head into London on my experiences, your experiences, and how together, I mean, we have created one of the coolest things in the car community. Supercars of London is pretty crazy, and it's only gonna get better, it's only gonna get bigger, and it is all thanks to you guys. <laughs> Go, 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 go. Okay, right, go. Right. Run, run, run. Right, which way are we going? Which, this way? Oh my god. I don't know whether it's like the tyres are cold, but it feels like it's... No traction! <laughs> I mean, it feels like we're literally driving in Snowdonia. <laughs> oh my my heart is racing. What, okay, should we just chill for a bit? Like, 
Then the hearts calm down. Right now, thank you. Go, go, go. Where are they? This is one way. They see us. I'm running down the middle of the road. <laughs> Have we made it? Is that it? <laughs> How close was that? Oh my god. We saw you too many times. Oh, I've not run that much in my life. 